Hey everybody, it is Maya Zahira here with Psychic Protection Sanctuary and we are now live in our free Facebook group which is called Psychic Protection Sanctuary. The full name is Psychic Protection Sanctuary with Maya Zahira Psychic Attack Support. I'm just announcing that because if you're watching this close to the beginning, then you're watching the replay. You might be watching the replay on YouTube, and I want you to know about the free Facebook group so you can take part in it if you would like to join us live in the future. So let's jump right in. Our topic for today is the Vengeful Jinn, an entity you do not want to mess with. This, uh, just a heads up, that this is not a soft and fluffy topic today, so uh, I wouldn't recommend this one for kids, although you probably shouldn't be having your kids listen to this particular um, Facebook group, Facebook Lives anyway, because it's all about paranormal. Um, but this one is, I might cuss today, and this particular type of entity is super scary. So just be aware of that. Um, so let me do a couple of uh, announcements and introductions, and then we'll say hi to everybody who is joining us live. So as always, this Facebook Live is all about uh, making connection and developing relationships. So we will be interacting a little bit. I know that's often a little bit weird for those of you who are watching the replay on YouTube. Um, it's not just a straight teaching video, but I know you will adapt. Uh, so I'll be interacting with you guys who are joining live. Uh, it's all about um, developing a relationship as well as sharing information and sharing important knowledge. So who am I and why do I know about this topic? My name is Maya Zahira and I work with people who are having trouble managing their energy and that can be anywhere on the spectrum where they're a sensitive empath and they're trying to figure out how to balance out their spiritual gifts without feeling overwhelmed all the way to the far end of the spectrum which is people who are dealing with major psychic attack major spiritual warfare so I work with all of it um, in my book, Darkness Disguised as Light, which you can get on Amazon, Darkness Disguised as Light, The Hidden Truth About Psychic Protection and the Illusion Matrix. Um, I'm going to give part of it away, um, and I don't think it'll ruin the book for you at all. Um, I, in the book, what I'm actually talking about is my firsthand encounter with this particular type of entity, which is a djinn. It's spelled D-J-I-N-N, D-J-I-N-N, or J-I-N-N. -N. Okay, now I'll explain a little bit more about where they come from um, in just a little bit. Um, but I've had firsthand experiences with this particular type of entity. So what I'm going to be teaching you about is today comes from firsthand experience and not just some stuff that I read from a book. Um, you know, there's a lot of teachings, paranormal teachings out there and spiritual teachings out there that are that don't come from firsthand knowledge. What I'm gonna share with you is what I know to be true. There is a really good book out there on this topic. It's called The Vengeful Jinn. So my video topic today, I, I wanna give uh, credit to this author because that's what she calls her book, The Vengeful Jinn. And this is by Rosemary Guiley. Rosemary Guiley. And oh my goodness, you guys, I feel like I have to sneeze, so sorry. And sitting in a squeaky chair, it's all good. Keeping it real. Um, okay, so in case you are wanting more than this video, because I'm gonna be giving you information about what these entities are like, but as you can imagine, um, even though I put tons of free content out there, I don't put everything out there. So if you need help with clearing a psychic attack or an entity or in particular a djinn, because they're really hard 
to clear on your own. I'm just telling you, they are. So if you need help, then I encourage you to go to my website, which is psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. And there's a place where you can schedule um, an appointment if that's what you wish to do. And then I also have a 12-month program, which tends to be a better option for people who've been under a psychic attack for a while. Um, it's very unlikely that you're going to get 100% cleared of anything if you've had an issue for many, many years. Like, you can't go through the McDonald's drive through or whatever, like, go and just, you know, have a quickie clearing. And so oftentimes uh, people do better when they join the 12-month program. And you'll find that. The Spiritual Empowerment Academy is on the website, too. Okay, enough of all the announcements. Um, okay, uh, as usual, I am going to have to look at my notes quite a bit. There's a lot to cover. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me, okay? And let me just see who we have in here right now so far. I think I might have scared people away because I posted what the topic was going to be and that it was going to be a little bit scary because uh, we usually have way, way more people. But you know what? It's Labor Day. That's what it is. So I'll make sure to put this video out there. Everybody who needs to see it will see it. And... Um, this is a topic that I've needed to talk about for a while. And in fact, actually, um, this topic, it actually is a little bit scarier than some of the other stuff that I talk about. And that's why I think it was like six, about six months ago, um, I did a class uh, where I went into details about this in my Psychic Protection Insiders in one of my um, very simple private groups that I have. Um, I taught a class to them, but I didn't feel ready to teach the content publicly because I just was afraid it would freak you guys out too much. But you can handle it. You've had the heads up, um, and I think you guys will be fine. Um, and this, if you are in my insiders group, I'm going to be covering a few different things that I didn't cover in that class. So you're in the right place. Um, so go ahead and tell us where you're joining from you guys. Thanks for being here with it being Labor Day and all. And I'm going to get into our lesson in just a second. Okay. Grab a pen and paper. And, um, I'm not trying to sell you guys anything. This video is, this content is freely given, but I feel compelled to tell you if you want to know more about how Jen operate, I do recommend that you get these two books. The Vengeful Jinn is a fantastic book. I don't necessarily agree with everything that she says, but she's done a ton of research. Um, and then I also recommend my own book, Darkness Disguised as Light, on Amazon. I know there's a glare, sorry about that. Um, and that is my personal story, as well as um, information on how to protect yourself. So with Rosemary's book, I don't think, although maybe she is and she just doesn't talk about it, but she's not psychic, she's not clairvoyant, she's not Claire, any of the Claire's. And so her experience, her book is more research-based, which we need that, that's important. Um, so, but that's that perspective. And so I think she has most of the information right, but what I talk about in my book and what I'm going to talk to you about here, this is based on things that I've actually seen and experienced not just one time, but multiple times. And when you've had an experience multiple times, like if you have an experience once, then you can say, well, maybe I misinterpreted or maybe that was just a fluke. But when it's multiple times, then you begin to see patterns. So I do recommend both of those books. If you suspect you're dealing with a gin entity or really any psychic attack, if you're dealing with any, any psychic attack at all, I recommend my book. Um, uh, but if you're dealing with a gin, I recommend both of those books and reach out to an expert for help because uh, this work, if you're dealing with a gin, it's no joking matter. Okay, let's jump in. Uh, Nora says hello from Arkansas. Melissa from Kansas City. Hey, you guys, we've got our tiny little group going here. Cool. Less is more is what I say sometimes. Okay, so pardon me while I stare at my notes. Okay, so let's talk about what 
the jinn are. We're going to define them. I'm going to talk about some of their patterns, and I'll also share some of the experiences that I've had. So historically, we know, uh, we know from historical documents and from Middle Eastern lore, the Quran, uh, that's where we know about these kinds of entities as far as historical writings. So in Islamic culture, Islamic lore, the Quran, <clears throat> the Quran, pardon me, I have a tickle in my throat. And <clears> throat> I need to get one of these. Talking too much today. So even though these are from Islamic culture or like the the understanding of them comes from Islamic culture a lot of people believe that number one these are like a fairy tale they're not actually real they're they're just from folklore and number two that if they are real they only exist in the Middle East and that's not true because I've personally experienced them here in the United States is where I live um, I have not done any international traveling but I've experienced them here and I have had clients who've um, traveled to the Middle East and have come back with gin issues and I've worked remotely long distance with clients who are in the Middle East who are having gin issues but I've also worked with people um, <clears throat> remotely long distance sessions all over the world who have had gin issues. So this whole idea that gin, if they, if they do exist, they're just a Middle Eastern thing, uh, not true at all. Now, I don't, I, I'm, I wonder, I don't know the answer to this yet at this time, but because of what I've experienced and seen myself and with clients, I wonder if gin entities are just equally distributed, like, maybe not equally distributed because I do think there are areas that I've seen in the United States where they're very prevalent and other areas less so. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but I'm wondering if they're pretty much all over the globe or if there there's more of them in the Middle East and that's why they're talked about so prevalently in the Quran. I don't know, but what I do know is that they're definitely everywhere. Um, now, one way that you might be able to connect mentally with the jinn, with the folklore, is that eventually uh, that folklore turned them into genies. So, I think, what's the story? A Thousand and One Arabian Nights, and then like Disney movies with like cute funny genies that are like tricksters but they're not that big of a but they're not like scary or anything they're just maybe a little bit tricky but they're they're usually kind of funny um that's hollywood that's not actually what the gin are all about it's not this like um little bit of trickster um being that you rub the lamp and then it um grants your wishes that's more fairy tale okay um if that does exist i've never seen it okay um then again i haven't i haven't traveled worldwide so i don't know but i've had a lot of experiences with jinn and i've never seen them i've never had any experiences where they've been in a container and they've come out and granted wishes i've never seen that what i have seen is that they show up in all these different places and um, create all sorts of chaos. I've um, never seen any kind of wish granting. Me personally, I've never seen any of that. Um, as far as I know from the folks that I've talked to in the Middle East and from the literature that I've read, um, many Middle Eastern people consider them to be demons and so they consider the jinn to be equivalent to what Westerners in the Judeo-Christian Judeo tradition think of as demons so it's kind of all lumped together 
and a lot of people do lump them together. I've even seen, um, I've seen lots of videos where there's one, there's a couple channels that I, I, I tend to watch a lot. I really like their videos and they often do lump, but they often do lump in gin and demons and, and archons and like, they kind of like put it, mush it all together. Um, and I get why they would do that because like they're all bad guys, right? All of them are bad guys that, that do bad things and mess with people and essentially enjoy feeding off of negative energy. So without them having the maybe clairvoyance or I guess what I was going to say is um, because of the, the experiences that I had in, that I talk about in my book, I, I really think that because of the trauma, like it was traumatic. It was a very jarring experience that I had that caused PTSD. It was very intense um, entity attack situation. And I think that trauma caused me to be majorly tuned in so that I know exactly what these type of entities, like I know instantly when one comes into the room, okay? I just have that spidey sense. So um, anyway, lots to talk about here. Um, next, I'm going to give just a brief description about demons in the Judeo-Christian sense and how I have seen demons clairvoyantly and how I've experienced them psychically when I've worked with clients who have had demon demons, okay, and how that compares to jinn. So I'm going to give a little snippet about how about demons because I want to distinguish that they are very different than jinn. And then I'm going to go into a lot of details about the jinn. Um, and we have Stephanie joining us from Vancouver, Washington. Hello there. We're talking about jinn today. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of, I don't know. It's such a, it's kind, it's kind, I hate to say it's an exciting topic, but it kind of is because it's a very dramatic topic. Maybe, maybe that's that's a better word for it. Okay, so demons. As I mentioned, uh, the, the demons, like with the horns and the red skin or whatever, um, they come from Judeo-Christian belief systems. And... Um, and I do distinguish them from jinn because of what I what I see as a clairvoyant, and what I hear, what I feel, all the all of that. Um, now, just as a as an FYI, I personally so where I'm coming from with this knowledge is I'm not a fundamentalist Christian, and I'm not bashing anyone who is. I just want to give you context of where I'm coming from. So I'm personally not a fund fundamentalist Christian. I don't believe in hell in the traditional fundamentalist sense where it's somewhere that bad people go to get punished and there's fire and brimstone and, and all of that. I actually don't believe in that. Um, I'm very connected with the afterlife and I've seen, I'm able to see certain aspects of the other side and it's like, vibrational layers on the other side where like whatever vibration you're at if you're at a vibration of like really low vibration of hatred and greed and etc then when you pass over to the afterlife you'll be in a place that matches that wherever you're at but it's not it's not so simple as you go to this punishment place with fire and there's the devil okay so uh, what I see when I look at the afterlife is not exactly the simplified version of the Judeo-Christian hell. So I think that's important to mention because despite that, I have seen tons of demons in my work. And think of them as being like the opposite of angels. So angels are um, here to assist humankind. Um, all beings assist the planet, assist various aspects of the cosmos. Uh, demons are working against that. They do, even though they are spiritual beings, how I see them, they look more corporeal, like physical, 
than jinn do. And when I explain jinn, it'll make sense. Um, in other words, demons often will present as having a body, so they will look humanoid. They will have a head and shoulders and arms and like body, etc. Um, and what I've seen with demons is that there's a hierarchy of them. And so the lower, there's lower intelligent demons that look more like creatures. Um, more like, if you were to imagine like gargoyle kinds of creatures, like these little short, short guys with wings. Um, I've seen many of them. They're very low intelligence. They can cause issues for a person, but they're not as dangerous as say, if you go up the hierarchy, so to speak, there's like the mid-range ones that tend to look more humanoid and they, they look like a human man or woman, but their skin, what the ones that I've seen, their skin is either some shade of red or white. I've seen white ones with white skin. And I've also seen them where they have um, different kinds of horns. I've seen little stubby horns and then I've seen like big um, spiraling ram's horns. Um, a whole variety of different kinds of headgear, whatever that's about, I'm not really sure. But they, that's how they've presented is a humanoid body. And then um, I haven't seen any tails. I haven't looked, but the horns. Um, and um, what else? And then the higher up in the hierarchy, they still have that humanoid sort of look, but the high, high, high up, they are super dangerous and they are, they come, they present to me as less corporeal. So less physical looking, more like, it's more like a humanoid, um, like features, but they're more transparent to me. Like they're, they're definitely more on the spiritual realm. Um, and they're highly intelligent and really dangerous so very seldom do I ever see anything that's like way like top ranking uh, demon but there is a lot about ranking with them because sometimes I'll remove a demon from someone and then literally like essentially their boss will come in and be like and then try to try like the next higher up will come in uh, for lack of a better way to describe it. Um, and there, so I've seen a lot of that like hierarchical uh, when there's there's a demon messing with someone, there's always someone higher up who's in charge of that demon. Um, so anyway, I'll give a few more details about what the demons are like, but then I want to get back to Jen. So, um, okay, so if there's demons nearby, one sign is that you might smell a sulfur smell. Also get a strong feeling, like you get chills or prickles on your skin because there's this feeling of evil nearby or darkness. Um, it feels really low vibration, almost like there's a black, like a black hole vortex of like darkness. It feel like the energy feels really scary. Um, and you know, it's true, demons do feel really scary and they are not to be uh, messed with and trifled with, but they are way easier to clear than jinn. And, and I tell people that because if they have had an experience where let's say they've worked with a client and they've cleared out a demonic entity and then, um, you know, I start telling them about Jin. Let's say we're colleagues and we're just chatting about stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah, no big deal. I'll just go in. I'll just clear that out. I'm like, uh, dude, you don't know what you're talking about because Jin, you do not want to mess with them. They are at least 10 times harder to clear than demons and then than any other entity that I have ever encountered thus far. Uh, so now back to Jen, but let me read Stephanie's comment and um, hi, Melissa. Good to see you, Stephanie. I have definitely had my own experiences with Jen for sure. Yeah, they're, they're freaky. So I went over what some of the qualities of demons are so that you can 
distinguish as I go into details about Jin. Of course, there are many entities where there's crossover in what their qualities are, but we need to understand that they are different beings. So, um, let me see here. Oh, I wrote, wrote down in my notes, good luck if you try to clear a djinn with an exorcism because they will laugh at you and come back harder and okay trigger warning this is how terrible djinn are they will come back harder than before they will kill your pets they will uh like terrorize your life okay like these dudes are bad um, now, the Quran, the, the Islamic holy book, says that jinn are made of flameless fire. And after I had had experiences with jinn, that, so I didn't know anything about jinn when I went through the intense experience that I talk about in my book. So for, I first of all had firsthand knowledge and then after firsthand experience and then after that, then I started reading online and reading Rosemary's book. And I found it interesting that as I read the literature, um, it talked about how the Quran says that jinn are made of flameless fire. Now, I want you to think about that. Now, I, I personally can give that more description for you because I've seen it. And I want you to imagine something like plasma. So, like light plasma or like, like um, a big ball, but not distinct. So, it doesn't have like a distinct edge. It's not like a ball of energy that has like a distinct edge, but I want you to think of like some white, white with a little tinge of blue, kind of like if you were to see the color of electricity. And um, if you saw elect, so like lightning and electricity, if you were able to put that in sort of an amorphous shape, it looks like that but less of the lightning bolts. There's no lightning bolts, but it's like that electric kind of white with a tinge of bluish to it. And that's what I mean by plasma. That's what, uh, that's what, um, that's what they are made of. They're made of energy and uh, the Quran calls it flameless fire, but it's like plasma, okay? So, um, now they are shapeshifters, so I have seen, and they're master shapeshifters. That's their mo, is shapeshifting into all sorts of things. So I've seen them in their plasma form, and then I've seen them in their plasma form literally transform into something else, and um, they will shapeshift into animals, people, angels, various types of spiritual beings, you name it, they will shapeshift into Jesus. They will shapeshift into God. And I saw this. Kind of had a major existential crisis for about six months after I saw a jinn that was pretending to be God. I'll tell that story in a little bit. Really a big mind F. Um, they will shapeshift into fairies. Now I'm a big lover of fairies, but the thing is, is like all the, either things that are scary or things that you love, doesn't matter. They'll shapeshift into any of it as a means to draw you in, either to scare you or to draw you in. Uh, because you'll think that what you're experiencing is real. Um, I've also seen Jin who shapeshifted into um, any of the pantheon of ancient gods and goddesses. Um, like, you know, Zeus, Demeter, Athena, etc. I've seen them shapeshift 
into demons. And that's where the real mind F comes, comes because um, we just talked about how demons are different than jinn, and they are. So there's actual demons, and then jinn will shapeshift into anything. They'll shapeshift into God. They'll shapeshift into a demon. So sometimes you'll think you're dealing with a demon, but it's not a demon. It's a jinn trying to scare the F out of you. Once I go through the rest of the description of jinn, you will see how they operate differently than demons. And so there's a really clear signs. It's pretty obvious. Um, last on the list, they uh, jinn will shapeshift into aliens. Um, I've, I've personally seen this as well. In fact, what I saw um, was a jinn that shapeshifted into an entire council of aliens and was trying to tell me that it was uh, wanting to channel messages through me. So that, that might be giving some of you pause because there are a number of spiritual people who are channeling councils of alien beings and what I know to be true is that uh, some of those are not actual councils of alien beings. They're actually jinn. Now, one of the things that jinn can do is they can shapeshift in such a way that they are able to present as though they are multiple beings. So, for example, I saw a, sorry, squeaky chair. Um, I saw a jinn one single jinn who was pretending to be a whole group of seraphim angels and that so that's pretty freaky just wrapping your mind around that so that also confuses a lot of people because they think that they're dealing with multiple entities usually they think they're dealing with a positive thing but if they start to suspect oh something's wrong um they, it's really hard for them if they don't know how jinn work they'll, they'll be really confused about what they're dealing with because they're seeing multiple beings so they assume that they're dealing with multiple beings but it's one and I've seen this so many times it is a pattern and again everything that I'm telling you today these are things that I haven't seen just once but these are patterns that I see okay um, now uh, going back a little bit in my notes and repeating what I said before that a lot of people think that jinn just exist in the Middle East and that's not true I personally have seen them all over and I'm going to tell you about that so I've already mentioned a few situations um, like the, the group of seraphim angels or the group the one Jin pretending to be a group of seraphim angels that I saw in Kansas City um, but I've traveled to different cities doing psychic fairs and I've seen Jin in a variety of places um, I did travel did like a little tour around the certain parts of the Midwest and I saw them through there um, and then now I'm living in the, the southeast I'm living in Tucson What's interesting is that so far, and I haven't lived in Tucson for, uh, it hasn't been quite a year yet, but I've only encountered a couple of them. I had one really nasty encounter, which I'm, I'm not ready to go into yet. It'll be in one of my future books. But I had one, there's one really nasty one here in town, and it attacked me bad because it knows that I know what it's up to, but it's pretending to be all sorts of things. It's pretending to be a council of aliens and it's working through a lot of people. Um, but as a frame of comparison, um, like there was, it's, it, it seemed from what I saw, there was a hundred times more gin encounters that I saw in Kansas city. I haven't seen very much here in Tucson. Um, that's another thing that makes me wonder. I think there are certain areas on the globe that are uh, th where the gen are just more prevalent for 
whatever reason and um, other areas where they are less so. Um, let's see here. So I mentioned about uh, spiritual teachings. So one of the common things that, that I see is that um, uh, that gin, uh, there's, there's a variety of people that I've worked with who've had issues with gin. Um, so it can affect just any random person, but I've seen a common theme where uh, a gin will attach to a spiritual teacher because gin um, love to not only terrorize people and feed off of fear, but they also love to feed off of adoration. They, Jin love to be worshipped big time. They love to be worshipped. So if they can pretend to be a choir of angels or a group of alien beings or um, ascended master so-and-so, that's a, I didn't mention that. Ascended masters, oh my god. They love pretending to be ascended masters. Uh, they love pretending to be Jesus um, because they love being adored. They love it. They are actually, um, I, I consider them to be psychopaths. They're narcissistic psychopaths. So they, uh, what they'll often do is they'll attach to a spiritual teacher and convince the spiritual teacher that they are ascended master so-and-so or a group of alien ascended alien beings or or whatever um and then they'll channel through they'll channel you know fake messages that sound really good that are like 80 percent truth and 20 percent bullshit but that's how a psychopath works a lot of the qualities of how a psychopath will manipulate people is exactly the same frame of thinking that Jin use. This is a very common pattern where uh, they'll give 80% truth and that way it's really easy for people to believe the other 20% hook, line, and sinker. Hook, yeah, I think that's how you say it. Um, here's the other thing is that I also, I mentioned this before, but I also saw, had, had an encounter with a Jin in a Christian church. And <clears throat> by the way, I had a, I had somebody in my world several years ago who was having a problem with a jinn who was pretending to be this person's spiritual teacher um, on the other side in the afterlife. So this this jinn was pretending to be this person's spirit guide, spiritual teacher, and she was trying to get rid of it, but. Um, they, it's true, they will terrorize you. It's like one of the hardest things a person will ever go through. I think it's why I'm so much of a stronger person now than I used to be. But um, the sad part was, was that, um, you know, it was so, so scary uh, for her that she withdrew all of the assistance that she was getting and then um, dove into Christianity, which... I'm not anti-Christian. I'm not anti-anything, you guys. I'm supportive of everything. But here, right around the same time, it was very synchronistic that right around the same time I had this experience that showed me that jinn operate anywhere. There's no religion that you can dive into where suddenly you're safe, okay? So I literally was sitting in a Christian church um, in the sanctuary and I happened to be sitting on the end and my friend was sitting next to me and um, the congregation was maybe like half full and mostly sitting up front like the first half of the, the seating um, and I'm just sitting there listening no big deal not thinking about gin at all okay I wasn't looking for it or anything I'm just sitting there listening and all of a sudden, it felt like something hit me hard on the right side of the head, right around my temple. And it happened so fast that what I know is that all of a sudden, I was down here holding my head. And I said, ow! <laughs> because it happens, it happened really fast. 
and I grabbed my head and said, ow, all of that happened like instantaneously, ow. And then I looked out from under my hand, like what just hit me? I looked out from under my hand to see what it was. And I saw the biggest gin I have ever seen. Because usually the ones that I've seen, how would I compare them? Are they're like, if you were to extend your arms from fingertip to fingertip, um, they're, I've never, I haven't seen any that were bigger than that. So um, if you were to imagine like, big section of plasma that's about half as tall as you are and about as wide as your arms. Uh, that's about the size that I've seen, every single one of them that I've seen, except for this one. This one was huge and it was so big that it was, it was covering up almost uh, the entire congregation. It was floating above, it was below the ceiling and it was floating above the congregation now, I, I can't prove how I know this part, but I am claircognizant. All of my gifts work together. I see things, I hear things, I know things, I feel things. And I looked up, so I look up and I see this and I'm like, holy shit. And the second that I saw it, I had the knowledge that it was pretending to be God. And... I also knew that it was male. I just could, I don't know how I know that. Um, I knew that this was a male being, that it was pretending to be God, and it was checking in on its congregation. Um, and remember, Jin loved to be worshipped. That was a very impactful experience for me. And as I mentioned before, I went through about six months of existential crisis after that because I was like uh, I never imagined that there would be an entity that would be even allowed to pretend that it is God like this this thing is pretending to be God how is that even allowed um, anyway so the point being that I've seen these entities all over and being in a Christian church does not protect you. I'm sorry to say. Um, I have also seen people of all different paths, whether it was Christian, Jewish, um, Muslim, uh, pagan, uh, and there's a huge list, obviously, but every, I've worked with, I, I attract clients who are a variety of faiths, and I've worked with a uh, people with gin issues of all different faiths and denominations. So I know this is scary to hear. I think that we want to believe that if something really unsettling and jarring happens, then we want to be able to cleave to like maybe the religion of our upbringing or our current religion, but I've never seen that that alone protects you. So um, now the next part is uh, about how they operate. So jinn thrive on fear, chaos, confusion, drama, terror, and adoration. They love being worshipped. So if the if adoration doesn't work, like if they try to hook you in by pretending to be angels and you're like oh wow this is so great but somehow it doesn't trick you like it like it wants to then it will try to be scary it'll shapeshift into something scary and then it will psychically attack you so often the pattern that i see is that it will initially present as something beautiful um, in order to get you to agree to have it um, in your life and if that doesn't work, then it will often switch to fear uh, and uh, it might present as a demon or, or some other scary, whatever it is, um, and try to terrorize you. So whatever method it's using, it, the goal is to manipulate you uh, and to control you. 
And I literally, so the experience with the gin that I had here in Tucson, because I had so much experience under my belt with numerous clients and some of my own really intense experiences several years ago with gin, by that time, this happened um, less than a year ago, by that time, I was so knowledgeable that as this gin was trying to mess with me, blow by blow, I knew exactly what it was doing. And um, so like at first it tried to present as these gods and goddesses. And then that didn't work. I said, I don't believe that you are what you say you are. So then it tried to pretend to be a council of aliens because I'm a seeker and I want to know the answers. And, the, and it, by the way, Jen can read your mind. And so it knew that about me. And it was trying to feed my ego, like, oh, you'll be seen as really important if you can channel these, uh, you know, this, this Council of Orion, these alien messages that will help you understand what's happening on Earth. And I was like, ah, something doesn't feel right about this. And so I, I checked more deeply with my spidey sense. Nope, it wasn't really aliens trying to channel special messages to me. It was that same gin. And then when that didn't work, it tried to present itself as an angel. And then when that didn't work, and, and that was the next day, when that didn't work, and you get the idea, then it tried to present as this scary demon thing. And um, then I was like, uh, no, I know exactly what you are. You're not scaring me. Um, so I think I'm assuming that was kind of a frustrating situation for that gin because I don't think that it was used to someone who could see right through it. But anyway, um, okay. Oh, um, so gin, they absolutely hate humans and they like to F with us. Okay, think in terms of a psychopath, a narcissist, who uh, they don't have the good intentions that you do. They're not even thinking in that way at all. The fact, because of the fact that you're human, they hate your guts and they want to mess with you. Now, the weird thing is, though, is that sometimes there will be a djinn that falls in love with a human and those have been the hardest cases that I've ever worked with because that gin is like being in a relationship with a psychopathic, narcissistic stalker that you cannot get rid of even if you get a restraining order. Um, those were, like I said, the toughest cases I've ever worked with uh, because those those gin do not want to let go of that person. They think that they own that person. Um but for the most part, most of the gin, gin interactions that I've seen are all about the fact that, um, in general, gin hate humans in a global sense. They just hate all humans and individually. <clears throat> now, I had a couple of experiences, uh, a couple of um, interactions with people. I mentioned that I had a gin encounter here in Tucson. And there were, uh, I shared this story with a couple of people and there were two people in particular that I want to share about that had a similar response. And after I shared the intensity of the story with them, and I haven't even told you ha even a fraction of what this, what happened, uh, that's, you're going to have to wait for one of my books on that one. But just imagine that I told this like horrific story. Okay. And then afterwards, the person says, oh, well, if you want to go back to that place, I'll go with you. Don't worry. Ne like negative stuff doesn't mess with me. I'll hold your hand. I'll go there with you. And I'm like, uh, and I had two people who responded that way in a very like condescending. Um, oh, it's okay, Maya. You're just a scaredy cat. And I'm like, um, you... Um, no offense to anybody, but I immediately thought um, toward each of them, these were separate incidences, incidents, um, I thought, wow, um, you guys are uninformed, kind of stupid, sorry, kind of stupid, misguided, 
and that whole idea that you have is super dangerous. And I'm just telling you, if you know that there's a gin somewhere, don't go there, okay? <laughs> you don't, it's way harder to get rid of it if it decides to attach to you or mess with you. So just avoid the encounter altogether, okay? Um, so gin, how they operate, they will, uh, they have no boundaries, just like a, so a psychopath or a narcissist. If you try to set boundaries with them, like we would often do for dealing with a negative spirit or something, we would say, you need to leave now and I'm going to burn frankincense and or sage or whatever. And I'm going to declare that you need to leave. If you do that, um, they often will pound you hard. Um, they will come back even harder or they will cause some really terrible psychopathic incident like they will kill your pet. I mentioned this before, like just these are psychopaths. So setting boundaries, if you are like, I'm going to, I'm powerful. I will just set really strong boundaries with them because I've cleared out demons before. Dude, these entities work totally different. Okay. Um, what they do, the, another thing that Jen do is they will create illusion and um, they'll create all sorts of distortions in reality. They'll make you think that you are crazy. Uh, they'll create bends in time or missing time, which sometimes then people think that they were abducted by aliens because alien abductions often go hand in hand with um, with missing time, but gin cause missing time as well. I had a missing time experience in the um, situation that I talk about in my book. They will also make wildlife act strange. So like the bird, like you might have like a whole flock of birds like flying in circles over your backyard, which I did uh, at one point, or like they're flying over your house or there's like a, a bird. I'm There's a lot of bird incidents that I've seen. A bird will sit out like right outside your windowsill and be like staring at you and pecking at the at the um, uh, window uh, but not just birds but other other wildlife I personally have seen the bird thing but I have a, a, an old friend who um, had she was witnessing other wildlife strangeness as well uh, they will try to terrify or control you um, in my personal experience, I uh, have had them communicate with me a number of times. When I would see them, I would also receive a message. And it wasn't just like, oh, I felt like when I saw the being in the Christian church, um, I, I had a clear knowing, like I knew something. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about how they would communicate directly with me and it's in a way that's very different for me. The, the only way that I've received this kind of communication ever has been through Jin. And what it feels like is that a loud, super loud telepathic message gets blasted into my brow chakra, into my third eye and into my head. And so I'll literally hear a booming voice in my skull in my head and that has happened numerous times and so I know that it's a pattern and um, all, all but one of the experiences that I've had with Jin have they've all been male except for the one encounter that I've mentioned here in Tucson was a female now I don't know like what are there more males overall or is there some reason why I've had, you know, 15 different gin experiences and only one of them has been female. I don't know that particular, the female entity. I didn't have that telepathic booming voice experience. I had a lot of other patterns, but not that, but all of them, uh, there were a number of male gin where I had this experience where it was the telepathic black, like blast, blasted message into my third eye. Like I didn't have a choice to block it. They, it was blasted through and it was a booming male voice. 
here's another freaky thing. If you were to imagine the voice of God, like in the old traditional Judeo-Christian like stories kind of way, the booming male voice, this is God, right? That's what the voice, every time I would get that telepathic blast, it's, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like that. Okay, so let that mess with your brain for a little while. Um, they are, jinn are spiritual beings. They are considered to be interdimensional. So they are not from earth, from the earth plane per se. They are from another dimension and they cross into our dimension. They cross back and forth. Um, now in Rosemary Guiley's book, The Vengeful Jinn, she does talk about how the, uh, there are people who believe that there are different kinds of jinn. Um, just like there are people, there are really evil people in the world. There are really good people in the world. And then there's all the rest of us that are a mix of, you know, all different agendas and stuff. Um, there are people who believe that jinn are like that as well, that there are certain groupings of jinn that are more evil and some that are kind of neutral and some that are totally fine. Um, I don't have anything to validate that. I haven't had any personal experiences ever with a neutral or positive jinn. So I, I'm leaving it open to possibility. Sure, maybe they exist. Maybe good gin exists. I have never seen or experienced one ever. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to read Nora's comment. Thanks for your patience, Nora. I was on a roll and I didn't want to lose my train of thought. And then I'm going to give you a couple of tips for getting rid of them. Uh, and then we got to run because it's been about an hour. Nora says, have had all similar experiences, feeling totally validated several attacks in churches on my head interesting they seemed to be beating on me and wanted me to leave yeah so nora people like us who see through the illusion uh they don't want us around like literally they'll bang on your head to get you to just leave because you're messing up their their little cushy uh, arrangement that they have and this is how I felt with the attack that I experienced from the gin here in Tucson which I cleared months and months ago by the way everything's cool thank god oh that was not fun um, but my feeling was that that gin had had things so had, had had this cushy deal going where like it had free reign being able to connect with all these different kinds of people because of where it was because of where it had set up camp um and it sure as heck didn't want me messing with um what it was doing and it wanted to make sure of it <laughs> so i can relate to what you're saying okay so let's wind this down i'm going to go over a couple of tips but now is a, an opportunity if you have any questions be sure to ask me now because after i go through these few things i'm gonna click off and go to my next class okay so how to get rid of them uh, first of all as I have repeated over and over again do your best to not ever knowingly uh, go near one so if somebody warns you that there's a gin somewhere please don't be stupid and go there uh, I'm not promoting boycotting any places that's not where I'm coming from it's that we're talking about your safety here and so if somebody says there's a gin somewhere or you suspect there might be please don't go there so avoid getting in contact with that one in the first place but obviously you don't always know ahead of time um, and so shit happens sometimes and you might end up having an encounter with them so if that happens, I'm going to give you some different advice than I normally give on the free videos right here. Um, 
normally when I do a video like this, I will give you at least a few tangible things that you can do to resolve the problem. I don't want to, I'm not one of those people that wants to leave you hanging or give you a cliffhanger so you have to depend on me. Um, that's why on purpose I always give at least a few tips. But seriously guys, if you're dealing with a gin, I really think you need to work with a professional. Um, they will F with your mind so bad uh, that it's, it will be hard for you to clear it on your own unless you are experienced and really knowledgeable. Like I was able to, to clear what I had. But if, if that's not the case, you do need to find a professional. Honestly, I don't care if it's me or someone else who knows about gin. I, I don't know anyone who specializes, but uh, who specializes in them that I can refer you to. But honestly, just find someone, me or someone else, you need to find a professional. They need to understand about gin. If it's just somebody who works with demons and stuff, they're, gonna, they're not gonna know what you're dealing with. So you need to find a professional who knows exactly how gin works. So they will help you understand all the craziness that's happening to you and you'll be able to get your life back. But I do want to give you one little tidbit that, that can help a little bit. Uh, if you're dealing with a gin, you can go to youtube.com and there are, are tons of free videos on there. Um, there if you do a, a, a search in the search bar and search for, I, I tested this, I looked it up to make sure, prayers to protect against gin prayers to protect against gin and you can spell it uh, d-j-i-n-n -N or j-i-n-n -N. you'll find it either way and there are prayers that are on loop repeating loop and so it'll be like a 20 minute prayer or a three hour prayer and you just play that and it's like uh like a vibrate vibrational sound cleansing and that does help i have actually had success with that where it will at least move it out of the space temporarily so you can have some relief. Now, heads up, these are Islamic prayers and um, I mention that because if you are very strictly adhering to whatever your faith is and you're not open to other faiths, I wanna give you a heads up that it is actually necessary that you use these Islamic prayers. The reason that this works better than perhaps like the Christian Psalms or whatever, whatever you might normally use, um, the reason is because, um, well, let's see if I can explain this here. I don't know for a fact exactly what part of the world these jinn originate from. I don't have any direct knowledge of that direct firsthand experience, but what I have observed is that they definitely seem to respond to Islamic prayers. It makes me wonder if they originally used to be mostly focused in that part of the world. I, I don't have that answer at this time. But uh, that is what works best for this type of entity. So I invite you to not be too so attached to using only methods that are from your own tradition. And remember that sometimes when you're clearing or battling with an entity, sometimes you need to use what it will listen to, not what you like or what you are aligned with. So keep that in mind. Um, I personally am a very eclectic person, at, at, personally and in my spirituality, so I use all sorts of things. But I'm just giving a heads up on that so that you understand uh, if you are feeling attached to your path, this is why you want to um, choose some of those Islamic prayers from the Quran. So on YouTube, you can type in uh, prayers, prayers to protect against jinn. And that will help you um, temporarily until you can get some help.
okay? Uh, if you are needing some more help or you just have some more questions about what I do, you can get more information at my website, which is psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. Uh, as always, it was a pleasure sharing this knowledge with you. Um, I don't, I just haven't seen that much information about gin out there. Uh, the only book that I have found, although I haven't researched this week, I haven't looked on Amazon this week, but I, I did look and look and look um, not too long ago, and there was only that one book, um, Rosemary Guiley's book, The Vengeful Gin. Um, there's not that much uh westernized knowledge out there there there's if you go in and research uh go into some of the islamic sites you you can find some information there which is really good and valuable uh but there's not that much information so that's why i'm really glad to have shared this knowledge with you guys today you know where to find me if you need anything more psychic protection sanctuary we do have our facebook live here in this group on the first Monday every month. So mark your calendar first Monday every month at 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central Time, United States. Um, and that is in the Psychic Protection Sanctuary Facebook group. See you guys next time. Sending you all my love.